something that I learned from a very dear friend in the very, I mean, I'm very connected to music, uh, that that is for audio purposes for when you're editing. I don't know why I didn't know that. I guess I just never thought of it. Hi everybody, I'm Christina. Um, oh, I haven't made a video in a while. Probably, I think actually the last video I made was when I went to the Scientology um, protest in Hollywood at the uh, Celebrity Center. And that was what, a month or two ago. But I want to come on and just kind of check in, let you know where I'm at and uh, share a little bit of experience, strength and hope with y'all if you're interested. So um, first I think I want to talk about real quick the whole AA Ron uh, no longer being a member of the board of the Aftermath Foundation. I don't know any of them really personally. I met you know a few really cool former children of Scientology, um, etc. Uh, when I went to that protest, that was awesome. But as far as the board, I don't think I know any of those people. Um, and I think that whole thing from everybody's point of view was a trauma response. Even the people that were watching it thinking that, you know, we have any idea of how to tell other people how to do their lives. I don't have any business doing that. I know that. And, you know, it makes me sad that it all went down, but that's how life is and that's how people are. And that's the kind of crap that happens. But the thing is, um, that's wonderful is that Aaron can start a new foundation and help even more people in a different way. And it was really weird um, seeing that people weren't getting that. People, you know, were so angry at so-and-so or this or that. You know, here's the thing. I don't care so much. Well, first of all, if it's not firsthand, it's none of my business. But as far as what, what I want to do, and I mentioned this, I sent an email to a couple people um, about this, what I wanted to do. And everything is very different since I sent those. So I'm going to just say it here. I'm just going to state it publicly and we'll make it happen. We're going to, what is it? How do you do, what's that called? Not affirming, but whatever. Making it real, putting it out in the universe so that it will happen. I want to, and I've wanted to, um, figure out, uh, design some kind of art show, um, like in a gallery or a similar type of space where uh, myself, you know, the children of Scientology and the, pe the people who are supportive of them or supporting them, all of us, I would love to have an art show that has Lara performing, Serge performing, and um, Liz can sing, you know, all that kind of thing. I want a multimedia mixed art show that, um, the, is a fundraiser for Aaron's new, um, charity. I want to continue helping people, uh, in any way I can. Um, and not because it's an ego boost to me anymore or that it's meeting some of my sick needs to try to help and fix people. It's, I'm not coming from that place anymore. Thank God. Um, I just, it's coming from like whatever is the best for all involved. May that happen. You know what I mean? So I feel, you know, really strongly connected to these children of Scientology because I think our trauma is very similar. Well, I don't think I know. Every time I listen to one of them share or, you know, make a video, I, I, I know exactly what they're talking about. And the, the amount of self-awareness that these people have, um, I applaud that. It's not easy. It's not, well, it's very hard facing uh, and taking responsibility and accountability for the crap that I've done. But you know what? It's... Talking about it, getting out is way more, way more better, way more uh, effective in helping me move 
the direction I want to go. I don't want to hang on to that stuff anymore. I don't want to hang on to my resentments and my traumas. So I would love to do that art show. So there's that, um, you know, wherever. I'm not too far from, I'm closer to Palm Springs. I would say that's the biggest um, creative place that I'm, or Riverside. Um, the city of Riverside, uh, California ha has a lot of art there. Um, either way, or Hollywood, I don't care. But that is something I want to see happen. I want to see that. I want to help make that happen. Um, I want to, you know, my photos from whatever the um, the protest or any other photos that um, that I have or can make that that could help the cause, you know. Um, so there's that. Uh, another thing that I'm working on, oh, this is all tangled up. I'm really sad. The scarf is really pretty. I was just, but I'm just kind of tangled. Um, and the thing that I've been working on just personally uh, for a couple months is my autobiography, if you will, of uh, the story of my life, because it's imperative to me that I let go of a lot of stuff that's in my brain that's not true. So I've been, by the grace of God, been able to look clearly, more clearly, I, like I'll have a memory and then I'll see my part and the other person's part. And people that have um, suffered a lot of trauma have a lot of shame. So and we feel like everything is our fault. Like if only I did it right, uh, I wouldn't hurt so bad. I wouldn't be so depressed. My mom wouldn't, you know, and my dad and my and my friend and that. <sighs> But what, what I've learned is, um, I've learned a lot of things, but what I, one of the things I'm practicing is taking responsibility for myself through these writings. And, and I have found that in doing that, the black cloud of whatever happened, that memory or that person or whatever, uh, is not over my head anymore. I have a lot to go through and I have no idea how long this is going to take me. Um, I have a lot of photography. I have a lot of story. Um, I don't know if they're going to go together. I don't know if they're going to be separate. I have no idea right now, but I'm just doing it. You know, when, it, when something comes to me, I do it. And I, I'm grateful to be able to see it more clearly um, and see the responsibility where it lies and, and have a little bit of grace for myself not being perfect and the other people involved um so that's what i'm doing for myself it just came it just started happening it wasn't something i chose to do really it just i just started writing and then i was writing in a bunch of different things and and i still kind of am and i was anyway i have so many different aspects so many different things that i'm trying to do that I, I'm just finally just bringing it all together in this book. Like this person right here is my dad, was my dad. And there's that whole thing. Um, he was, he, he, complicated man, um, had some stellar, qualities and had some stuff that was not constructive about his personality and his choices. Um, but he did a lot of awesomeness. You know, he, he, for those of you who don't know, okay, so this is, this is me trying to combine <laughs> some of my stuff. So I have this, um, narcissism recovery awareness, thing. I have the story of my dad and my personal life and my mom and my sisters. And, um, I, I just have to go through it all. And I, and I'm, I want to share it with you. I don't know how it's going to come out. I don't know if it's going to be a multimedia situation. Um, all I know is that it's coming to me and I'm writing. So hopefully it all comes together well. I love to write. Um, since I was a kid, I've been a creative writer. That's what they called it back in fourth grade or whatever. Um, 
and I I used to be able to do it well you know and then I had writer's block for the you know past 30 40 years and and it it's going away and it is not of my doing it just is happening so that that's where I'm at like I don't the truth does not care about your feelings the truth does not care about my feelings and I'm tired of try and it doesn't work trying to make everything the way I think it's supposed to go that's been my biggest problem I would say in my life or character defect if you will if that's the kind of language you use but the thing that's gotten in my way well fear <laughs> fear's gotten in my way a lot but just all the trauma response right all the trauma responses I have them all I have all the help and there it's I'm finally healing um, so all the stuff I've done kept me alive until now and now I feel like I can finally put some stuff in use that I've learned uh, about myself and yeah how I function um, there have you know been some things that uh, that I have endured that were not just and you know we'll go through those but 99% of what ha of the people that I've loved or the pe things that have happened to me or the whatever what you know that abuse I've endured um, most of the people like uh, almost all of the people I can forgive because I get it we're all just doing the best we can I get it and we do stupid shit and we hurt each other and it's not intentional but that's how life goes but if you are you know if your friend or your partner is someone that you could trust you work it out so that's life a lot of the people that uh, were my friends um, either have passed away or moved out of state or you know just gotten all, along with their lives um, and, and it's my turn now that my kids almost an adult it's my turn to focus on what I have to do for myself and for the first time it's it's sticking I'm doing something right so I just wanted to get on here and share that with you it's not always it it, it can get better it absolutely can get better I I was pretty hopeless most of my life um, until now I say I have hope and the more that I do like out loud the more actions I take that are in alignment with what's important to me and what I believe in and my morals and my ethics and this and that the louder I am about it the more it seems to help me so that's why I'm doing this video um, my name is Christina and I'm a photographer and an artist and a mother and a sister and etc um, but I'm lending my voice to this it seems to be changed it seems to the it the dynamics the anyway I don't know what the word is seems to be changing in that people use the word trauma and trauma recovery and complex post-traumatic stress disorder and you know whatever recovery um, it seems to be more it seems to be more in the lexicon these days it seems to be uh, the the stigma oh you can't tell cuz I the mental whatever I have a little pin here so something about mental health stigma um, yeah the stigma seems to be I don't know if it's going away I don't know if this is just a phase or I don't know if everybody's like you know what this is a fucking mess really like literally like really what do I need to do to make my life and my family's life okay like that's all that matters to me it seems to seems like we're getting back to that point it might be just the things that I, I'm exposed to I don't know but I would love to think that mental health doesn't have such a stigma because it did in my head I did not want to admit how sick I was I did not want to admit how distorted my thinking was um, but once I did it was very freeing you know uh, again I, I'm figuring out what's my responsibility what's my part and dealing with it there's so much freedom in that and um, all the people that bug you and that you know you don't like or you know all that stuff becomes less important 
all that stuff, you know, because to me, what matters is being the best person I can, having integrity, living with honor, um, and being the best mom I can be, the best example I can be. My child was not exposed to the trauma. I have to remember that. It stopped with me. It wasn't going to be any other way. I had to stop the cycle of violence and addiction. And I have, so, you know, today, for today, m my kid is very healthy and happy. Um, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much all that matters to me. I'm really grateful for that. But beyond that, if there's something that I can say or do or affirm or validate for somebody else, um, that's why I'm talking out loud. Because if, if I can make it, <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth all.
my ability to perceive. I'm a better able to trust my perceptions. And that's a big deal. You know, there's a lot, <laughs> I've had a lot of big deals, a lot of epiphanies, a lot of breakdowns, a lot of whatever, but I, I keep showing up. I keep, I know that all the other stuff that I've tried isn't going to help me get to where I want to be, isn't going to help me see things the way I want to, you know, so I'm doing some different stuff and I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm happy to, I'm grateful that, uh, that I am so in love with the truth. I'm grateful that I have things that I can trust, you know, have ideas and friends. I, I think I'm probably repeating myself, but I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it in different ways. Just seeing all the different, uh, effects and all the different Mm. It's been an interesting road. So I hope you join me. How I don't know, like if I'll ever have the energy to do another video. I don't know. I would love to. I would love to do this every day and just, you know, feel comfortable enough to share stuff with people and know that it's reaching the right people. <sighs> one day at a time. So I'm doing this today. It's all I can, all I can do is one day at a time. Um, let me see. I did take a couple notes, but I think that that's um, basically what I wanted to talk about. I do want to do some more videos honoring the people and ideas that are important to me because I think it's an important to add that to the conversation. Um, hang on, this is, feels like someone's stabbing me. I don't know. Um, I want to. I want to add some solution to this um, trauma. Because I don't want my emotions to make my decisions for me anymore. I don't want my trauma to make decisions for me anymore. I'm, I'm done. It doesn't work. It doesn't bring me joy. And I want joy. And I want happiness. And I want people in my life that make me laugh. And that I, I know have my back. And, and I have a few of those people today. And those people aren't, aren't lying about me behind my back. And they're not stealing my medication and they're not, uh, we'll get into that when we get there. Um, but if you've watched any of my videos, I don't know what I've left up and what I've taken down, but I've been uh, recovering specifically from narcissistic abuse since 2005. So, um, it was eight years ago on the 4th of July, I kicked this guy out and then learned what I had just been through. And, and I know, I know in my heart, that if I had known people like that existed, people like uh, that are that highly manipulative and literally have no, well, empathy, but they do not value reality and they do not value the truth. I didn't know those people existed. I knew there were loud, mean ah, people that I stay away from because I don't like loud noises because I've got my reasons. Um, but, okay, I totally lost my train of thought, so I'm going to stop, and I'm going to watch this video, and then I'm going to continue, because I know it was important to me. These light, the lighting is weird. Here, let's see what else we can do before we go. Let's see if there's anything else. You know what, here, hang on. That's interesting. The lights. Remember, I'm a photographer, so that's what I'm looking at. I have lights. See, I have a red light for light drying or light painting or whatever. <clears throat> but I like how it's making my hair look red. <laughs> okay, let me figure out what I was trying to say up here. Okay, so I have to edit. Here's some sound. There we go. Good. Okay, so I had to take notes because... I have no memory. Um, well, whatever. I have memory recall disability, which, oh, by the way, let's just talk about that for a second. So I have all these things that make life very hard. I have lots of um, medical issues and this and that. 
which I believe is just uh, the self-hatred that I carried for so long, manifesting. Manifesting, that's what I was looking for earlier, manifesting in my body. Um, so that's another reason why I'm trying to self-care so that, because um, that's the only way it's going to work is if I start taking care of myself because nobody else is going to do it, right? Okay, so what I was saying before is, oh, if I had known that there were, um, there was, there were people that, that don't value, oh, but the guy, I kicked out the guy in 2015, not 2015. I know people would just straight up lie to my f face and, and do things <laughs> behind my back like that. And I didn't, because I didn't know people like that fucked up. I mean, I've known people that are messed up. And uh, one person in particular that I'm thinking of that um, she recently told me she got the diagnosis of borderline, which makes a lot of sense. Borderline personality disorder. Um, but sh she did some really gnarly stuff to me throughout my life um, by my standards. And but I knew she loved me. I knew this and I know this still to this day. This woman, we love each other very much. But because of the trauma we've endured and our trauma responses and, and how each of us handles it, I can't interact with her, um, and which sucks. So hopefully someday I'll be able to because I love her very much. Uh, but she knows that I can't trust her <laughs> and she can't do anything about it other than, you know, whatever it is that she's doing about it. Um, I haven't talked to her in a while because, like I said, I can't. But... Um, so I knew people like that existed because I, you know, she's a part of my life since I was about 14, but I didn't know there were people who were so messed up that, that, um, I don't know. I just didn't know there were, I didn't think I would be stupid enough to fall for that. I didn't think somebody could manipulate me that much, but now looking back, taking responsibility, taking account accountability, I realized that I wanted, I wanted to believe her, you know, I, or this is a different person. I wanted to believe, um, this guy that, that I really loved and was engaged to, and then realized was, um, screwing everybody. Uh, I can't, I cannot say for sure because I was not there when these things occurred, but I was told by someone who was there that um, not everybody was of age. And, okay, this stuff is a little too heavy, so I'm just gonna stop there. But I'm gonna just gonna say, had I known those people existed, I wouldn't have, I would have had armor. I would have had something to prevent me from going that far into believing someone who was simply using me. Um, there were a couple people at this same time, this narcissist and this other person who I thought was my friend. Now, I mean, I forgive alcoholics and addicts because they are using drugs to try to get through this hard life. I understand that. I, I respect it and I accept it. But there's, there's something beyond that, you know, the people who have certain kinds of uh, personality disorders, um, they go above and beyond the average asshole. And so anyway, that's why I'm here because I want, I have to share my story in case it can help somebody else who's in a relationship of any kind that is abusive and in their way uh, of thriving. So 
I'm going to be telling my story. I'm going to be writing it. I don't know how much I'm going to be sharing online. Um, it might work out that way. It might not. Uh, we'll see because it takes a lot for me to get on here and I don't particularly enjoy it, which is weird because I'm a I'm fine in front of a crowd. I can publicly speak if it's something that I know what I'm talking about. Um, so, it, but I think it's the permanence of, of this and like, what if I make a mistake? And I, I guarantee you, I should, I should respond to some of my old videos and tell you what I know now that I didn't know then. Um, but because I was so self-destructive, because I didn't have self-respect or honor uh, for myself. I didn't, I didn't make choices that reflected that. I made choices that reflected how much I hated myself and I allowed people to abuse me because in some, for some reason in my head, I think that's better than abusing others. Um, and all this, all this rage that I have, uh, what's the word, um, passed down, inherited, all the rage that I've inherited has been, uh, focused inward because I kind of thought I could control that. And if you, well, I don't know about you, but if I look at it clearly, I can see how childish that belief is and how it probably served me when I was a child. Um, but I'm not a kid anymore and I want all the truth. I want to be able to accept the truth as it is. And I have uh, some interesting stories. So there's, um, just the different uh, this the different instagrams that i have i have my personal one which is glitter fist i have the um, narcissism abuse recovery one which is called grounded period in period truth and then i have this other one which is to honor my dad and we'll, we'll have you know long story a lot involved but there are things about my dad that I must champion and I must share. And so on uh, that, it's called Rip's Run, which was the name of the article that he wrote and photographed for Easy Writers Magazine um, and uh, some of the other Paisano publications uh, until his death, uh, the year 2000. And that is him with, I think, Darlin. Let me look. Oh, it's on the other side. Hang on. He, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, real quick. I have, I have a, a, a thing that I'm going through in regards to my dad. I'm having a lot of memories come up, um, experiences that I had, things I was exposed to, things, um, you know, just lots of stuff. But also, at the same time, I am capable of honoring the things about him that I absolutely appreciate and admire. So he was, um, he's an intense dude. He was an intense man. And, and I know there's other parts of him, and that's why I talked to some of his friends. Um, because I want to hear their side of it. I want to hear what, how they know him and the experiences that then some of the fun times they had with him. Um, because all I know is from my point of view. And so I have videos of that interviews that I did years ago, of some of his friends that I'd like to share. So I'm trying to combine everything. Narcissist uh, abuse recovery, honoring my dad and making art. That's what my life is about today. Um, and the art takes lots of different forms. Um, this, no, right. This is a, that, that painting is probably the most recent one that I like. This one I'm working on and I don't really like it yet. Um, but that's okay. It's still, you know, it, it, when I, I, when I make art, it's meditative and I get out of my head and I'm, kind of able to just get into the whatever the thing is that I'm making and really usually if I'm making it for someone you know I'm putting lots of love in it lots of good energy and good vibes in it um so that's where I am today that's what's going on today I had to you know either kick people out of my life or yeah set boundaries um 
and it's not fun, but it's way better for me than waiting for them to change into who I think they're supposed to be or who I want them to be to make me happy or comfortable or feel worthy of love or whatever it is. So, you know, here I am today and I, every day, every day I get chances to honor people and ideas that matter to me and that have made a difference to me. So I, I'm going to share a little bit of that in the next video of what, what that looks like for me and how this process is unfolding for me. So thank you for joining me. Um, I do not consider myself SPTV. I consider myself SPTV light because it's not the only focus of my channel and the things that I share and my experiences. But again, I'm doing it for everyone that I've loved that has endured abuse. I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it for everyone else that doesn't deserve it, which is most of us. Didn't deserve it, don't deserve it. And to let you guys know that just for me, I have hope today. And I've lived a long time without it. And I know what that feels like. So I'm going to keep moving forward. And um, I'll keep sharing stuff with you as it, as it comes up. So thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Um, please subscribe. Like and subscribe if this is your vibe. Did I just rhyme? All right. I am a poet, most of all. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> thanks for being here. Uh, Love and support to all of you, especially those who have loved ones who are self-destructive. I have to make I have to make amends for some of the crap that that I did, that my trauma did through me. If you want to put it that way. Um, anyway, I love you guys. Um, give yourself a little bit of grace today and patience. Just keep going. That's what I'm doing. Till next time.